Hello crafty friends and welcome to this my top 10 ways to use alphabet dies video. In this video I'm going to share my top tips for using alphabet dies on clean and simple cards. I'm going to demonstrate some techniques and I'm going to make a card from start to finish for you. So let's dive right in and look at how I set my alphabet dies up for die cutting. So I've got a bit of washi tape here. This is from my use it or lose it washi tape box. You could use regular masking tape or any kind of low tack tape. And I just pull off a strip, flip the end over on my glass mat, and then flip the other end over so that it sticks to my glass mat. You don't have to use a glass mat for this. You can use anything because low tack tape like washi tape will peel off. So I take my alphabet dies and I line the bottom of the die up with the bottom of the washi tape and I work from back to front or this is the front backwards if you see what I mean because when I flip it over and die cut I want the word to be the right way around so this is kind of like a mirror image I guess. The word I'm doing today is smile and I'm trying to get roughly equal spacings between the letters and getting the letters straight I might move this S in a bit closer to the M and when I flip it over I'll have the word in the right order with all the letters level and the reason I do it like this I line them up on the washi is so that when I cut the letters out I get the letters that I want but I also get an aperture with all the letters lined up straight which I can then use on another card so I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine like this and I'll show you what I mean I'm sure you know what I mean but I'll show you anyway so there we go that's been die cut now and not only have I got letters that I can use on a card I've got an aperture that I can also use on a card. There are plenty of ways to get your dies lined up nice and straight. So here I'm lining these up so the bottom of the die sits on top of one of the lines in my glass mat and then I can get a piece of washi tape, pull it quite taut and just press it down and then I've wobbled that one slightly but it's easy enough to straighten up and then pick them up like that or you can take a ruler or any kind of straight edge really and butt them up against the straight edge like that and then again go in with your washi tape and pick them up like that so let's look at some ways of using our alphabet dies on our clean and simple cards. So this is probably the most straightforward way. Number one, that is cut and stick. So I used some alphabet dies to cut some gold letters out of gold foil cardstock and I stuck them on this bit of background from my box of backgrounds and bits that I'd cut into a rectangle using a stitch die and mounted onto a little panel of white cardstock and because I lined up my dies in a straight line that left me with some gold foil cardstock with an aperture cut in it so I cut that down into a rectangle and stuck it on another rectangle from our box of backgrounds and bits and then added some flowers these were left over from yesterday's video and i also popped some small enamel dots for flower centers so by lining up your dies before you cut them even if you don't intend to use the aperture part you can get a two for one the one that you want to make and one that you can make then or at a later date So on to technique number two, which is cut and inlay. So I've cut my letters out. I've got this panel with an aperture word in it. I can put this on a card blank. Imagine that I've cut everything down to the right size and glued it down. And then I can get some more 
letters this time they are cut in gold cardstock and I can inlay them with glue on the back obviously or double-sided adhesive of some sort I can inlay them into here so instead of sticking them on I'm placing them in the apertures and that gives a kind of one layer look so just imagine I've glued all that down. I'm not gluing it down because I want to use all these bits to talk about lots of techniques. And here are a couple of cards that I made with the cut and inlay technique. The first thing I did was die cut some gold letters out of gold foil cardstock. And then I die cut some letters out of this background. And then I cut banners from the gold and the background. And then I just simply swapped the gold letters from there into there and the background letters from there into there. So I've got this nice, smooth, one layer look. So now we're on to technique number three, and that is back and aperture. So you've cut your letters from something, whether it's a background, a bit of pattern paper, some white cardstock, gold cardstock, whatever, and you've got this aperture. So we've inlaid letters into it, but now we can simply, instead of putting it onto a white card base or whatever card base, you can back that aperture with a patterned paper or a background as I've done this is again left over from my box of backgrounds and bits you can either put the background straight down or you can maybe separate the two with foam tape which is what I did here I took a shimmery shiny background from I think it might have been a stenciling video my 25 ways to use stencils and I simply put a panel from which I'd cut the letters on some foam tape and then put it over the background so you can see all that shimmer and shine and the drop shadow through. And then I also cut some circles from the leftover bit of background and covered those in crystal drops for a bit of dimension and shimmer and shine on the top of the card. Right, on to technique number four. You could make a shaker card using your alphabet dies because you've again created this aperture. You could put vellum behind it or acetate something clear or a bit of leftover packaging. And then as you do with any shaker, you on the back put some foam tape to create a well, which you can then fill with anything. So here's a shaker card that I made. I cut the word smile from this stitched rectangle panel, just put it right in the middle there so it had lots of impact. I backed it with vellum and then added a layer of foam tape around the back. I filled the well with some small white flower die cuts and some iridescent glitter. And then I closed up the well with a bit of pink paper that I got from my box of backgrounds and bits and then stuck it on a card. I also added a pink flower here, same kind of flower as inside but I coloured it with a bit of pink ink that was on my brush and used it as the dot over the eye and I really like the way that looks. Right, technique number five is to make your own DIY thickers. Thickers, I think, are an American Crafts brand of dimensional alphabet stickers. There's also numbers as well. Sometimes they have foam to give them dimension and sometimes they're made of chipboard or cardboard. But you can make your own. To do that, I generally use sticks to anything self-adhesive foam. And it's quite thin, only a couple of millimetres, but it just gives a nice lift. And here we have another piece of background from my box of backgrounds and bits. How many times am I going to say that? And all I do is take a little bit of it, pop the foam on the back, lay my dies on top where I want them. Sometimes I'll add a shim because some dies struggle a bit with the foam. And then you should be able to, 
if it's cut through properly you might find that the backing paper stays on the release paper or it might come out if you don't want to use foam you can just use a couple of layers of card behind your letters so take some scrap this is a great way to use up scrap paper and once you've die cut your letters you can dip them in some glue this is how i like to do it i tend to put a bit of glue on my mat spread it out with a glue spreader dip my letters face down into it and then layer the top on top and while the glue is still wet you can sort of wiggle it into place and you can do as many of those as you like you could do two three four five if you wanted really thick chipboard like letters and here's one with diy dimensional words i used a gel print and the self-adhesive craft foam die cut them out and then layered them over the top of this background that i cut with a banner and obviously again you could add more to that card if you wanted something less clean and simple for technique number six we're going to make a drop shadow so i've got a piece of black cardstock here and i'm going to cut my word out in black and this is going to be my shadow now obviously you don't have to use black you could use a metallic card if you wanted a shiny shadow you could use any color card you like but i'm going to use black right now because i think it will show up best it will demonstrate the technique best so we can glue our letters down to our panel or card front or wherever we're putting them and you put your shadow colour down first. So imagine again that these are glued down. And then you take your top layer and you glue them on top but offset slightly. So I'm going to put mine to the left and up a bit. So my shadow is coming down and right. And I'll do the same for all of my letters. It's a bit tricky because I'm not gluing anything down. You might want to space your letters out a bit because you're actually kind of widening the, the letters, the space that they take up. And there we have letters with the drop shadow. You can just jiggle them around until they will look how you want them to look. And this is one I made using a banner I cut from a background and letters that I cut from a little bit of leftover background and I used a black shadow again down to the right and bottom and I love the simplicity of this and the contrasting colours and the black really helps these to stand out I think if I didn't have the black there these colourful letters would get lost on that background so technique number six, adding a drop shadow, can really help your letters stand out and it can also bring in an illusion, I guess, of depth and dimension. Because even though these letters are only one piece of card thick, they look kind of a lot thicker because this shadow is making them look that way. So technique number seven is spotlighting. What I've done on this card is I have cut the word smile four times out of smooth white cardstock and once out of a bit of purple paper. I've then arranged them in rows with the colorful one in between two white ones. It could have gone down here, it could have gone in the middle. And then I took some of the white letters from inside of these die cuts and inserted them in here so this looks like one layer because i've inlaid my letters inside the apertures in the purple squares but this is just a fun way of adding a bit more texture and interest to a clean and simple card in this case i've got square letters arranged in a square all saying the same thing but this really pops so that's a fun way of doing it and you don't have to use square letters you could use any alpha dies and arrange them in a columns or rows or however you want you could do one long horizontal row across 
a say a slimline card with just one word in a particular color the rest in white or you could do them colorful and add a gold one or something like that so you can spotlight a word amongst other words okay we're on technique number eight now and that is mix and match i like to take alphabet dies from different sets and mix them up for this one i cut some tall skinny letters in gold and then on top of that i layered some small chunky letters so i've got the word smile with a smaller smile on top and i layered these on a banner that i'd cut out from some purple inked cardstock and then added some more of these little flowers with some gold flower centers you could if you wanted bring the gold to the front and make the smaller word gold so it really sparkled and stood out you could have, let's say, the smaller word in a really strong, bold colour and then the tall, skinnier word in a paler version of that colour. So it's almost like a, a shadow. I think it would look good in a really neutral colour palette in greys and blacks, for example. You could have this smaller word in black and then the larger words in grey in the background. And this one, I guess, is almost like a ransom note. I took each letter from a different set of dies and I cut them from the same piece of paper that I'd blended with reds and orange and yellow ink. So you get a bit of an ombre which ties them together. And as well as mixing and matching your kind of main sentiment, you can add sub sentiments with other alphabet dies. So this one is a really small alphabet die and I've used it to add a for you so the sentiment now reads a smile for you if you didn't have a small set of alphabet dies that you could do sub sentiments with you could also mix and match your alphabet dies with stamps so you could find the words a and for you in stamps and stamp those on instead and if you wanted to give them a bit of dimension you could say heat emboss them Right, we are on to our penultimate technique now. That is technique number nine, jazz up your die cuts. So with these die cuts, I created a dipped look and I did that by die cutting from a piece of card that I had added gold foiled washi tape to and some greeny grassy washi tape. I'll show you what I mean. So I took some gold washi tape and let's take a different one this time. This one's green with gold on it. And now I've got my dies and I will put them on here so the bottom of the dies lines up with the bottom of the washi tape there. And then we have the word smile. The bottom half is gold as if it's been gilded and the top half has got some gold and some green on it. You obviously don't need to use a metallic if you don't want to. You could use any combination of washi tapes that you like. You can also do a similar thing with heat embossing. So I've got my letters all lined up where I want them and I want the bottom part of my letters to be gold. Actually I'm not going to do all of them because I want to show you another technique or two. Let's just do two and I'm going to cover the bit that I don't want to have gold on. Okay so I only want gold on the bottom portion. Now I'm going to take some embossing ink, this is my embossing ink pad, and just wipe it over the bottom portion, the visible portion. I'm going to cut off as much washi tape as I can because whatever I put in there is going to get some gold embossing powder stuck to it. And then dip it in my gold embossing powder and heat it with my heat tool. Before that's cooled completely, I'm going to peel off the washi tape. You can obviously do that a couple of times if you want a really solid gold. So here we have some dipped or partially gilded letters that we can use. Speaking of gilding, you can take gilding wax. This is treasure gold, white fire. Get a bit on your finger and go around the edge or all over your letter 
and it will give it a bit of gold here and there which will look pretty i use that technique for a father's day card this year and i'll insert a photo now so that you can see what it looked like so i've just stuck some letters down there just to keep them still while i do the next few techniques another way of jazzing up your die cuts is to give them a bit of gloss and dimension using some kind of glaze so this is nouveau crystal glaze you can get glossy accents from ranger which is very similar to this you could also use nouveau drops so that is just now and it will dry clear that is simply a glossy kind of enamel shape if you go over the edge a bit you can use tweezers or a cocktail stick to kind of scoop it up but that will give you, when it's dry, a clear, dimensional, glossy glaze on top. Morning Dew is the Nouveau Crystal Drop that dries clear. But you can also get crystal drops that have glitter in them. This is a ooh, glitter drop. There's a surprise. And you can use that to add some glitter, dimensional, glossy glitter to your letters. If you haven't got a glitter glue that you could use, you can always add some kind of glaze on top, like the crystal glaze or glossy accents. And then you can take some actual glitter. Oh, <laughs> and do that with it. Oh dear. I was banned when I was in the Girl Guides from using glitter during craft sessions because of things like this. Anyway. <laughs> So what you can do is add some glaze or glue to the top of your letter and then sprinkle some glitter on top. This is quite chunky iridescent glitter but it makes a lovely dimensional glittery finish. As we've made a complete mess of everything I'll get my tiny glitter out. I'll just scoop a tiny amount out with a bit of paper and sprinkle that over the glaze. It's a good job we're almost on the last technique. <laughs> there we go. So now we've got a chunky glittery finish and a tiny, tiny glittery finish. And one last way for now to jazz up your alphabet die cuts is to, before cutting, get rid of all the glitter. <laughs> and put some clear packing tape or contact paper onto your cardstock. I'm just using black here, but obviously you can use any card, pattern paper, background, whatever you like. Put that on there and then cut your letters from it. And that is a really simple, really mess free way of getting glossy die cuts. If you're worried about the longevity of this technique, whether the packing tape will go yellow, I honestly don't know if it does or it doesn't. But if you want to use this technique and you want to make sure there is no yellowing, then see if you can hunt down some clear acid-free archival tape that you could use. So now we've got some black glossy letters that have just that little bit more impact to them, I think. So that's technique number nine, jazz up your die cuts. On to technique number 10 now and our start to finish card making process. For our start to finish card, we're going to make an eclipse card. I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock here that is about eight inches by four inches. So that's going to be the front of my card. And I've got some large alphabet dies to do the die cutting with. And I've got them lined up on a bit of washi so they're ready to go. But before we do any die cutting, I'm going to add some colour to my panel. And I'm going to do the smushing technique with my smusher, which has some blue ink on it, which I wasn't anticipating. That's a lesson that we should always check to make sure our tools are clean. <laughs> right, we're going to smush on some yellow and then dry it with my hairdryer. I'll just mop up some of the deeper puddles of paint by rolling some paper towel over it and I'll give it another blast. And now for some dried marigold. These are all 
analogous colours, warm colours near each other on the colour wheel so they won't make mud when you mix them together or layer them. And again, I'll dry that. And the final colour is worn lipsticks. So that's going to go on top. And now we've got a really bright, warm, energetic panel to create some more depth and dimension, some visual layers. I've got some splatty stamps that I'm going to stamp on. These are very subtle. A different splatty stamp for a different colour. And I won't bother with the yellow because I don't think that will show up particularly. I want to add a bit of contrast. I'm going to get this deep copper metallic paint and spatter that on so I'll get some contrast and I'll get some shimmer and shine from the metallic. And again, I'll give that a dry. And now I want to add a band of rose gold washi tape across my panel like this. And I've just got my T-square ruler here just to help me line it up. I'm going to put my head right over so I will edit that out for you. OK, I think that's nice and straight. I'm going to line up my dies so that the cutting part is level with the bottom of the washi tape. I can just sort of feel it. If I gently push the letters upwards, I can feel where the little cutting bit touches the washi tape. So I'm gonna anchor that down there. It's about the same distance here and here. And now I'm gonna run that through my cuttle bug. I'm gonna carefully remove our dies and die cuts and I want to keep both parts because these are going to go back in here and now I want to turn these into DIY thickers just as we did before. You could do the layering of cardstock technique to make them like chipboard or you can use foam. So now we have our background, our letters and our foam. Before we do anything else I need to add this panel to a card blank and I'm going to put glue in all the little nooks and crannies of the letters because I want everything to stick down properly so that's all lined up I'm going to use some non-stick deli paper just to press everything down doesn't matter if you get glue in the aperture because we're going to put our foam letters in there so it'll all be covered up I'm just going to take the backing off the foam letters and put them in their apertures. I do have another video in which I made an eclipse card using the cardstock layering technique. So if you want detail about that, I will leave a link in the video description and you can go and watch that video. So that shows that technique rather than the foam technique. So they're all stuck in. I can take the backing or the fronting, the topping, this release paper off. And now I can stick the letters on. I do find it can be useful to put a bit of glue on just to give a little bit of wiggle room. So I can now put this on the top and wiggle it into perfect position over the foam letter. And I'm just going to quickly do the same for all of these. OK, so there we have our finished Eclipse card. You could embellish it further if you like. I know it's not very clean and simple. It's quite uh, chaotic, I suppose, in the background. But sometimes I like to break out of the clean and simple mould, but you can still do something like this and have lots of white space left over. You could just do a band across the middle of a card, use a smaller die so that your die cuts don't take up so much of the real estate. I'm pleased with the way that's turned out. I really do like Eclipse cards. I like that uh, almost hidden message, but it's there when you tilt it and you see the dimension. Right, that's it. That's my top 10 ways of using alphabet dies on 
cards, mostly clean and simple. I hope you've enjoyed the video and picked up a few hints and tips along the way and it's given you ideas of things you could do with the alphabet dies you already have. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.